I'm Andrew de Block, the Area Tourism Project Manager from Bird Life South Africa. And I'm going to be talking about our recently launched Go Birding platform, as well as um, Bird Life South Africa's network of recommended accommodations. And hopefully, I can convince you of the value of joining this network by the end of the webinar. So, who is Bird Life South Africa? There were just a handful of you that aren't familiar with us, but essentially, we're a conservation NGO that's focused on birds and their habitats. We also registered PBO as well as an NPO in South Africa. Um, and we're also part of an international family, so we're the partner country, or the, part, the country partner, sorry, of um, the BirdLife International uh, Umbrella, which is the largest uh, grouping of conservation organizations in the world. Um, so very proudly part of this broader network um, of partners all over the world. And we basically run uh, scientifically based conservation programs that conserve birds in their habitats. In terms of our reach, I know people in the tourism industry, especially when you're trying to um, get members for, for an association want to know about reach. Um, so our website, uh, since the beginning of the year, I've got our communications manager to pull some stats. We've had 50,000 users this year, 75% of those are South African and 25% international. Our Facebook group has nearly 64,000 members and is growing at about 100 members per day. Um, we have a reach of 2 million people through this group, apparently, Facebook tells me. Um, our Facebook page for Bird Life South Africa has 26,000 likes. And since the beginning of the year, our posts have had a reach of 225,000 people. Um, Instagram and Twitter, we use less of, but we have 12,500 followers on Instagram and nearly 3,500 followers on Twitter. So I like to say that Bird Life South Africa has the respect and the ear of the birding community in South Africa, which is a fairly substantial part of the population, usually sort of upper percentile earners. Um, certainly there's a bias towards older members, although there is a growing younger membership base as well, um, and a huge supporter base across South Africa. Even if they aren't direct members of BirdLife South Africa, um, we have an incredible um, support base in South Africa. Um, I think one of the most recent events we ran was a chartered cruise to Marion Island, and we had 1,500 birders on board and raised 5 million rand for conservation. So that tells you the scale of um, achievements that BirdLife South Africa has had in the past. Um, what does BirdLife South Africa look like and um, where is the AV Tourism Project and how does this all fit in? Um, it's a, obviously a conservation organization, so our tourism project is a bit of an anomaly. And um, within this, we have our six conservation programs, as we call them. And the AV Tourism Project actually falls within the Empowering People program. So uh, that should tell you a little bit about our focus, which is more people oriented. We don't run tours. We don't look to make money out of tourism. We are literally using birds and tourism as a way to reach people and bridging the gap between birds and people. So our AV tourism project is trying to bolster the AV tourism um, economy um, and in the process grow support base for conservation. So those are basically our objectives and our standing in the tourism industry. Um, some of you may not know about AV tourism and then what it is and what it represents. Um, simply, AV tourism is basically birding tourism. So any travel that takes place with the objective or end goal of seeing birds in their natural habitat. Um, and these are both, uh, this classifies both the domestic and international markets in South Africa. And in 2010, there was a study uh, done by the Department of Trade and Industry on different niche tourism sectors, of which AV tourism was one. And it actually came out that AV tourists in South Africa are an exceptionally valuable demographic because they stay longer than other niche tourism sectors. They spend more money and they travel more widely, especially to rural areas. So birds, um, by the beauty of them being distributed across all the different habitats of South Africa, are present all the way from um, the, <laughs> the deserts of the Karoo and the Kalahari through to our cities, through to our nature reserves. Um, our coastlines, our forests, and uh, everywhere else. So um, birders, if they want to have a good list, have to travel very widely and to undervisited areas. So um, birders uh, travel more widely than others. It brought a, an estimated 2.25 billion um, to the economy in 2010. So certainly still a niche tourism sector, but a growing and fairly significant one. And in today's money, that would be worth 4 billion rand, of course, with um, COVID and the pandemic, we're not sure what that's done to the numbers exactly. We are planning a follow-up survey actually. And I think the, the most important takeaway was that birding and heavy tourism are growing markets. And I think the pandemic and national lockdowns when everyone was 
uh, forced to connect to nature through their garden and the birds that visited has done wonders to grow birding um, in South Africa and internationally as well. So I expect that these numbers will, will tick up. So let me introduce the Tourism project. Um, uh, we have a few chief projects uh, within this. Um, I guess you could call them sub-projects. Um, and I'm going to focus on um, three of them. The first is the Community Bird Guides project. Um, the second will be our recommended members and the third our Go Birding project. So the Community Bird Guide project is a, a long-standing project of BirdLife South Africa of over 20 years. We've trained 200 people from rural and privileged backgrounds to be uh, professional bird and nature guides. So pictured here in the forests of Makubas Kluwerth is Paul Nkumane. Um, he's one of our graduates and we have currently 50 guides working actively across the northeast of South Africa. This is a snapshot from the Go Birding map, which I'll introduce you to later, but you can see the, the distribution of these guides. So Go Birding is one way that we uh, promote them. We don't employ the guides, they work as freelancers, but we have an excellent relationship with them and we have a partnership with Swarovski Optic to get them binoculars, Canon phones, cameras. We have branded uniforms for them, um, upskilling all the time. Um, so a great relationship with them and a really uh, feel good and impactful project. So they are a major part of our every tourism project. Um, I do consultancy work to various nature reserves, um, conservation authorities, um, accommodations on how to bring birds to birders um, to your to your properties. Um, and I'll just include an example here of the Maputo National Park in southern Mozambique. Um, and I produced this with the Peace Parks Foundation uh, just last year. So that's some of the work that we do. Um, we run the South Africa Listers Club. So birders love to keep lists of the things they've seen. And anyone who's seen 300 or more species in South Africa can join the prestigious South Africa Listers Club. And we've just past the 500 member mark um, after just short of two years since launching. So growing quite nicely and creating a nice community of birders in South Africa. We run webinars um, every Tuesday night. We have since the onset of the national lockdown in what was it, March 2020. And uh, we last week had our 100th episode. We have an average audience of 450 to 500 people. Um, so really good uh, following on the, the webinars every week. Um, and I'm one of the three hosts of that series. And then the Go Birding project as well. So this is what I really want to focus on and I think is the, the catalyst for, for today's webinar. And um, I think what will interest most of you um, the most. But I'm going to keep that as a um, sweet temptation just to keep you on the line. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of other pointers before we go into that platform. First is to let you know that we have a magazine called African Bird Life. Um, it has a readership of or at least estimated at over 30,000 people, mostly Southern Africa, but also into Africa as well. This uh, comes as a membership benefit of BirdLife South Africa, and you can also buy it in various shops, um, all the regular outlets uh, that you get magazines in. Um, and this is a the front cover of the latest July, August uh, magazine, which is, I think, going onto shelves imminently. Um, so some beautiful photography, it's widely regarded as one of the best bird and nature publications on the continent, um, if not in the Southern Hemisphere. So uh, certainly something to consider getting yourself in if you are taking birding seriously as a, a demographic that you'd like to attract to your properties and your accommodations. Um, getting an advert into African bird life is a must. Um, and a, one of the membership benefits is I'm about to get into um, for uh, the recommended accommodation network is that um, you have discounted bulk subscriptions so you can get a magazine in every room in your hotel for instance um, and you can get discounted advertisements as well in African bird life so um, wonderful to have that connection there and that reach to your direct target market. So these are our recommended accommodations so we call them our bird life South Africa recommended accommodations and um, they're spread across South Africa. At the moment, we have about 60 members. Um, I expect that now with the launch of Go Birding and the incredible benefit that's going to come with that in terms of the usage of the platform and the connection to birders traveling from overseas and um, within South Africa, um, we're going to increase that number. I'm hoping to have over 100 um, in our network by the end of the year and then to keep growing that from there. But this is the essential distribution at the moment. There's some, I think you will 
maybe some significant gaps there to fill. For instance, I see we've only got one in the Northern Cape um, and we're missing a certain chunk of the Oberberg and the Garden Route. I know there's quite a few people from the Nisner Wilderness area on today. Um, so hopefully we can plug some of these gaps um, going forward, but that's, that's what this looks like. And each of the green thins represents an accommodation. So what are the BirdLife South Africa recommended accommodations? Um, they were previously known as the Bird of Friendly Establishments, which you may have heard of um, if you've dealt with BirdLife South Africa in the past. We've since remodeled and rebranded this whole scheme um, to bring greater, greater, <laughs> greater benefits, excuse me, to both the accommodations and BirdLife South Africa. Essentially, they are accommodations that are suitable and equipped to cater for birding guests, particularly in those areas that offer excellent birding prospects, whether that's on the property or in the greater area. Um, it's on an application basis, so not just anyone can become a, a BirdLife South Africa recommended accommodation. There are certain criteria that you have to meet, and this is done through a self-assessment and potentially a site visit um, from a reputable birder. And then it's on an annual subscription basis, so it is a membership with BirdLife South Africa. We're a member-based and member-driven organization, so that's how it's run. So, um, every year you will have to renew your membership for BirdLife South Africa, um, hopefully with lots of enthusiasm um, after all the benefits that you will accrue. And these benefits uh, range very widely. I think we have an incredible range of benefits that we offer for very reasonable prices. Um, they include, and I'll just read it through, a subscription to African BirdLife magazine, your profile on the Go Birding website, which I'll, I'll show you now. The use of BirdLife South Africa's recommended logo on your websites, on your materials, wherever you deem appropriate. Um, dedicated quarterly newsletters to our recommended members, as well as the regular BirdLife South Africa monthly newsletter that goes out to our 10,000 followers. Um, posting rights twice per month on our Facebook group. So that's the one with 63,000 members. Um, you get two monthly newsletter features per year, which goes to just over 10,000 people. Um, bulk subscription and advertising discounts for African Bird Life magazine, as I mentioned. Discount of presence at the African Bird Fair, which we run every year and is coming up at the end of July. Uh, invitations to Bird Life South Africa's events, partnership on birding events with Bird Life South Africa, and the list goes on. So I'll refer you to the information brochure, which I'll pop in the chat in just a couple of minutes, um, which will lay all of these out in full. But essentially, that's that. And I'd like to now show you the Go Birding platform. Um, while we're going, and I'm switching my screen, you are welcome to pop any questions into the chat. I'm just going to swap over to my internet browser so I can pull up the website for you. Excuse me, looking over here, I've got a second screen. All right, so this is our GoBirding platform. Uh, it's hosted at gobirding.birdlife.org.za. Alternatively, you can just use gobirding.co.za that will redirect you right here. And it's a bit easier to remember, I think, but essentially it's hosted as part of the BirdLife South Africa main website. And this is what you'll be greeted to greeted with um, when you log into the website. Um, a little bit of history or, or introduction to, to GoBirding, the platform. And then this is really the, the meat and drink is the integrated um, map interface, which shows all of the birding sites, accommodations and guides. So all of our birding sites are in blue. Um, the green pins are our recommended accommodations and the burnt orange pins are our community bird guides. And um, the next two classes we're gonna be adding to this map are our BirdLife South Africa recommended tour operators. Um, so commercial tour operators that specialize in birding tours. And we also have over 40 affiliated local bird clubs spread across South Africa. So we'll be adding those pins as well in different colors. So we launched this website just over a month ago. It's been two years in the making. It was put together by professional bird guides during the lockdown who were out of work. So we managed to contract them in, um, help them out in the time of need, but also lean on their incredible experience and expertise to put this together. They completely revised and updated all of BirdLife South Africa's tourism information um, to produce this map. And we have, just to give you an indication of, of the, the scale of information here, there's over 400 birding sites, um, ticking over 410, I think now. We're adding to it, feels like every week, um, with new submissions. 
I mentioned just over 60 accommodations and just over 50 guides um, with the different colors. So you can actually um, filter these using this. Uh, I don't know what's happening with the Mac there, sorry. Um, the birding sites in blue and the guides and two operators in, in orange. Um, we're going to refresh this page because it's clearly a little bug there. Um, so if essentially each of these icons has its own um, pin, obviously. Um, the idea is that that you, if you're traveling around South Africa and say you're going to Cape Town for a conference and you want to see African penguins, of course, Baldur's Beach is known as the best possible place to see these. Um, you're really looking around Cape Town, looking at all the different destinations that you can visit, whether it's pelagic seabirding or um, Kirsten Bosch Gardens, for instance. If you come down here to Baldur's Beach and click on Baldur's Beach, it'll give you a little photograph, the title, and a bit of a teaser here. So Baldur's is currently one of only two mainland based African penguin breeding sites. Um, and then you can click for more information. And essentially what that does is takes you away to a dedicated web page. So there's a dedicated web page for all of the 500 pins on our Go Birding site, a real wealth of information, which will give you the title, the general area. So all the sites are grouped by area. Um, some interesting information on what are the key species, who are the management authorities, um, a gallery of photographs, contact details, and then um, the, the real meat of the page is this uh, basically an introduction to what the birding is like at the site, what you can expect to see, where you can where, where you should be going to maximize your, your birding experience, and then some information about the birding site. So this is some historical information. I don't know how many people actually know that Baldur's Beach only established in 1985, for instance. So some, some contextual information to enrich the, the birding information. And then some other related information, such as directions, entrance fees, gate opening hours, accessibility, um, some extra information around what are the, the resources that are downloadable, um, web links, and then who are the local guides and the local accommodations. So if you go back to the map, you say, wow, that sounds amazing. I'd love to go see penguins. I have all the information I need. Um, where can I stay? So then you look at the green icons, the accommodations, and well, there's one right here called Avian Leisure Apartments. And similarly, this will take you away to a dedicated web page for Avian Leisure. Um, so these are, um, <laughs> there's a lot of work putting all this together, a lot of information collection, um, and then web work on the back end. But we're quite proud of this, and I think um, it really stands to to benefit tourism service providers across South Africa in terms of linking them with the birding community, both domestically and the inbound regions. And we have some plans to, to boost this uh, profile overseas um, through relevant birding expos and tourism expos, um, doing webinars with some of our bird life um, international partners um, to, to get this, this website into their inboxes and in front of their eyes on their screens. So hopefully this will go from strength to strength. We launched this in late May, so we're about a month in. And I checked last night and we had just close to 3,000 users um, in the last month. So I think for, for a platform that we, we've basically done one webinar about to our own constituents and through our own social media, and we haven't put out a press release yet, that's imminent as well. Um, and then we've got some plans to really pump this overseas and uh, keep growing the interest. So I think that's performing really, really well. And I think, I hope, and, uh, and I do anticipate that this is going to become the premier source of great information um, for South Africa, uh, if not already. This is uh, certainly surpassed all of the relevant um, where to bird in South Africa books that I know of, um, in terms of the scale and breadth of information um, and the sites included. And I think the fact that it's a digital interface and really puts the accommodations guides um, in context with the different birding sites is a major, major advantage um, and is a, an incredible benefit um, for those accommodations who are looking to bring birders in um, and increase the number of birders that are um, staying with you. So I hope that you agree with that. Um, like I said, it is the question and answer box for any questions. Uh, essentially, um, I think from here, I'm going to just pop the, um, or maybe I'll just share my screen and um, show you the the information brochure and talk you through the different options for the recommended accommodations. So if you'll give me a second.
All right, so here is our information brochure. And I'll, I'll actually pop a link in the chat um, right now before I forget. Um, all right, so I put a link in the chat. Um, you should be able to download the file in a second. All right, uh, but this is what it looks like. Um, an introduction here to to the recommended accommodations network and why BirdLine South Africa is a critical partner if you're looking to bring birders to your accommodations, an introduction to our Go Birding platform, and then a link to the online form. So as I said, this is all done through an applications basis and all through an online form and self-assessment. So this is the link you need to apply. And then there are tiers of memberships that come with different benefits. So certain benefits are reserved for higher tiers, of course, um, and here are the costs as well. So for South African entries, um, we're looking at just over 1,500 Rand. So um, a little over 100 Rand a month, um, which I think is incredibly reasonable. And that will get you a subscription to African BirdLife, a profile on our AV Tourism uh, web pages, including the Go Birding platform, a certificate of membership from BirdLife South Africa, use of our logo, the quarterly dedicated newsletter, as well as invitations to events, um, the tier two or intermediate egret, as I like to call it, we have little egret, intermediate egret, and great egret. I can't resist having a bird theme for the different tiers. Um, tier two includes all of the benefits of tier one, as well as advertorial posting rights on our Facebook group. Um, so this is a little outdated. This is um, from last year's stats, um, twice a month. Um, and that is reserved for our paid up members. So not just anyone can post on our Facebook group. Um, advertorial posts in two of our monthly e-newsletters, as I mentioned, um, and preferential listing over tier one. So, for instance, wherever um, accommodations are ranked, the upper tiers will always be above the lower tiers. And then uh, tier three, at 2,600 um, per year, it includes discounted bulk magazine subscriptions, discounted rates for African bird life classified adverts, um, and again, preferential listings over the other two. So. My contact details are here. Um, this is our office telephone. It's probably better to, to email me, um, andrew.block at birdlife.org.za. So I'll just put that in the chat as well. So that you have an open line, any questions or queries that you'd um, like me to answer. Um, otherwise, from here, I'm going to take a few questions, but essentially, this link here, which I'm also going to put in the chat, um, if I can just highlight it there is the online form link and where you need to go to to make your application so that's it from me short and sweet um hoping that this has convinced many of you that number one birders are an incredibly valuable and important tourist demographic in south africa and that this is growing um number two that bird life south africa is a creditable and important partner um, and has the the reach and the reputation um, to lend credibility to your accommodation as a, an appropriate birding stop. And then three, that we have the requisite benefits and, and I guess the right price points to attract you to join our network. We'd really love to have you. We're looking to grow that as much as possible, especially in those key areas where we don't already have um, service providers that we can send birders to. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I'm going to have a quick look at the Q&A box. Um, okay, so the only one that uh, I can see that's relevant here is from Roland. Thanks for the question, Roland. Um, he's asked to feature on the Go Birding site. Do properties need to be a recognized bird friendly establishment? So, firstly, um, bird friendly establishment is the old terminology. We've, we've gone with Bird Life South Africa recommended accommodations. I think it just puts um, that relationship with Bird Life South Africa front and center. And yes, so as with the posting rights on the Facebook group and in our e-newsletters to get onto the Go Birding site, you do have to be a fully subscribed recommended accommodation in order to be featured. So um, if your membership does lapse and you don't renew, we will hide those profiles. And as you join, we will um, add those profiles. So that's, that's how it works. Um, I think the, the membership fees given that they're somewhere between 100 and 200 Rand per month um, and the, the benefits that, that accrue from that, if you can get just a couple of bookings, I think you'd, you'd 
more than made made your money back on that. And I think we do have incredible benefits to go with the GoBooting portfolio, so a profile. So thank you very much for the question, Roland. Yes, you do have to be a fully paid up recommended accommodation to be featured on our site. Great, I'm not sure if there are any other questions. I am not seeing any others or messages in the chat box that I need to, to deal with. I do see that question from Louise saying, where do we start to become a BirdLife South Africa recommended accommodation? Um, and I put the link to the online form in the chat box. So hopefully that is helpful. And I think that's that's pretty much it. All right. Any other questions? Okay, Wesley. Um, thank you for your question from Wesley. He's asked, do you need to provide birding on site to be part of the program? So no, um, it probably is preferred, but if you are situated in an area where guests can stay over at your, your lodge or your accommodation or your B&B um, and explore the, the general area and there's good birding to be had in the area, then absolutely we'll take you on. It's not a prerequisite that you have to offer, for instance, guided birding tours at your accommodation. Um, so that's not part of the process. Question from Ian on how to become listed as a bird guide. Um, so Ian, I'm going to pop a link to our tour operator brochure um, for you into the chat. So you should be able to see that now. Um, so this webinar was geared towards accommodations, obviously, um, but I think that we also have a number of tour operators on here who do offer birding specialist tours. And I know Ian, you do do that. So hopefully you can see that brochure there. That'll have the link to the relevant um, online application form for you there. So as long as you are a licensed, ethical um, and legally operating bird guide, um, we will probably be happy to feature you on the GoBirding site. So there you go. Okay, what I might just do, I see most of you are still staying online. I'm probably gonna go back to the GoBirding platform and just um, play around and give you another idea of, of how the site can work. Okay, so if we go back down to the map, and I didn't explain, there are also other tabs up here. For instance, a news tab that gives uh, different helpful advice on where, um, how to go birding, how to choose binoculars, um, the birders code of ethics, places to go birding, so guides to birding in our national parks, for instance, um, introducing the community guides. There's also a link to our listers club, which I mentioned, and our shop, as well as a donate option. But I think the home page is where most people are going to spend their time. There is a search function here. So you can search for, for areas. Um, for instance, if you search Cape Town, then the sites around Cape Town should come up. Um, this one is a bit of an anomaly because it mentions Cape Town in the description. But um, generally, that search function will take you to the Cape Town sites. Um, so there we go. Well, we've spent a bit of time in Cape Town already. So I'm going to reset this map and take you out to the broader South Africa. Maybe somewhere where we've got some community guides. So let's go in here. Um, all right, so who have we got here? This is Becky Nyandeni. So Becky operates in the Kuzi area, Lake Sabaya, Lake St. Lucia. Um, let's find some others down here perhaps. Um, okay, who's this? Pola Jobe, she's in Sisu and Falozi Park. Um, Tim Van Timbu, one of our most popular guys down in Zealand. So we'll look at his profile here. So as I said, every, every one of these has a dedicated web page. You have his name, his operating areas, his contact details, and then there's even a link for those guys that do have marketing videos, which we shot last year. You can access them here and get to know your guide even before um, you go on a tour with them. So that's the example of a community bird guide. Uh, we're looking at other sites here. So here's an accommodation, the Rhino Ridge Safari Lodge. Um, gives you an idea of where they are and they have a dedicated web page as well. Um, Mufalozi Game Reserve. And let's have a look at this template here. So here we have a gallery of photographs and what to look out for. Um, what are your key species here? contact details, um, extensive sections on 
um, the different birds that can be seen and what the key species are, the area and uh, a little bit of history about the, the sites as well as the habitats, etc. And then other, other related information again, so directions, um, points of interest with GPS coordinates. So very, very user-friendly, um, very useful information, um, accessing facilities, etc., etc. So I'm not seeing any other further messages in the chat or in the Q&A, so I'm probably going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that we see some of you submitting applications to become recommended accommodations. I can't wait to have some of you featured on the Go Birding map and to work with you going forward on all the different uh, AV tourism aspects. Um, I hope that this has been a very useful webinar and there is a little post webinar survey just with 10 yes no questions if you don't mind filling that in um, just so I can get an idea of, of what people's thoughts are um, after the web after the webinar. Thanks Charlie, I see your message in the chat. I'm looking forward to getting in contact with you. Uh, thanks Johan as well. Um, thanks to everyone else who's sending me some lovely messages. Um, I wish you all a very productive and happy rest of the week. Uh, all the best with the cold, those of you who are upcountry like me, um, and with the load shedding all over the country. Um, thank you very much and uh, we'll be in touch.